second module in our series of tutorials on energy swaps, we'll discuss an important edge a swap has over fixed price supply contract as a hedging instrument. That is, the swap's ability to separate financial from physical risk. Topics covered in this module begin by considering the advantages swap hedges have compared to using fixed price physical supply. Key to this is the ability of swap hedges to separate physical supply and delivery risks apart from financial or price risk. This in turn provides structuring flexibilities not generally possible with fixed price supply and allows the hedger to manage each risk discreetly and optimally. The consequences of force majeure differ between swap hedging and physical hedging and risks already commingled in an existing contract can be unbundled using a swap. In the first module of this series, we saw that a simple fixed price supply contract offered protection on two fronts. The user here is buying physical power at a fixed price of $60. The user, a power consumer, is naturally short power risk. The fixed price contract creates a long position as an offsetting hedge. This contract hedges price risk. If we look at the risk profile of the long position created by the physical contract, it is a straight upper sloping line intersecting at $60. If prices rise to $70, there is a profit of $10. If prices fall to $50, there is a loss of $10. But price is not the only risk being managed with this contract. As a firm contract, the user has the commitment of a seller to provide the physical. As such, this contract also manages or hedges physical supply risk. If we take the supply contract and replace the physical power with power index cash flow, we create a swap, one that also provides an offsetting long position. It should be obvious that the break-even index price would be $60. If index went to 70, the result would be a $10 profit to the user. If index fell to 50, we would have the user losing $10. In other words, the swap creates the exact same price risk position as a fixed price supply contract. This implies that from a fixed price perspective, a dealer would be indifferent between a swap and a supply contract. This means that the swap hedge provides the exact same price risk protection as a fixed price supply contract. But what it does not do is offer any support for the user's physical risk. To provide for its physical power needs, the user will enter into an index supply contract receiving power deliveries, and paying the future power index. This addresses the user's physical risk. And the swap hedges the user's price risk. The two risks have been separated into two discrete transactions. Now, let's see how this structure plays out. If power index rises to $75, user pays the $75 to the power seller. But user also receives $75 from the swap dealer. Those two flows exactly offset, leaving the user with a net cost of power of $60. Likewise, if index falls to $45, user now pays $45 to the seller. But user also receives $45 from the dealer on the swap. They again exactly offset, leaving the user in with a $60 cost of power. In other words, no matter what the index price posting, the user will have a stable cost at $60. The swap together with the index supply contract combined to synthesize a fixed price supply contract. And now the question that arises is, why execute two transactions to get fixed price supply when only one is needed? The answer is there are a number of reasons why doing two may be better than doing only one. One big motivator is price. It may not be true in all cases, but generally speaking, the pricing in the physical market can often be less favorable than found in the financial market. For many, but not all, energy markets, there is greater liquidity in financial than physical trading. Many financial institutions are active trading purely financial products and do not participate in the physical market. But virtually everyone active in physical energy trading are also active trading swaps and other financial products. Greater liquidity results in narrower bid offer spreads. In this example, we see the physical market quoting 58 bid 60 offer, while the financial market is quoting 58 40 bid 59 60 offer. The user pays the higher offer price. Note that both have the same mid market price of 59. The swap price quoted is cheaper because the spread quoted around the mid market is narrower. 
plus or minus 60 cents compared to plus or minus one dollar in the physical market. A secondary explanation for more favorable prices is the incremental physical supply risk perceived by the marketer. If there are significant concerns about potential delivery problems, the physical dealer may well add a risk premium to the price of physical. On the other hand, the swap dealer never had to contend with these physical risks, so has no need of a risk premium. A non-price advantage also goes to the swap. Again, not a universal truth, but hedgers have reported getting higher quality credit counterparties when dealing in the financial market. But even if there was no pricing or credit advantage using swaps, the more compelling reason to choose swaps over physical hedging is its ability we saw earlier to separate price risk and physical risk into two independent transactions. This separation allows the hedger to optimize both risks. Transact with the best swap dealer, generally the one quoting the best price in the market and or has the strongest credit rating. Separately, transact with the best power provider, the most reliable, the most responsive, or perhaps the lowest priced. Seldom, if ever, will the two best counterparties be the same company. In physical hedging, only one could be optimized. With the swap, both are optimized. This separation of risk has other advantages, including much greater structure and flexibility. One example might be a user who wants a lock-in reliable supply for the full calendar year but as generally bearish price expectations don't suggest a 12-month fixed price. His anxiety relates to the possibility of a very hot summer causing power prices to spike. While having the security of 12-month supply, the user can choose to put on the swap hedge for just the summer months. Another user, more anxious about his power costs, wants to lock in those power costs for two years, and so executes a 24-month swap. But believing he has some advantage trading the swap market, he chooses to trade prompt month and even daily power. In so doing, he expects to source power below the index price, which will serve to reduce his all-in cost of power. Consider now a power buyer entering into a 12-month supply contract for 30 megawatts, priced at the power index. He hedges with a 12-month swap at $60 but the swap is only done for one third of the volume, 10 megawatts versus the 30 megawatts of physical supply. The hedger also executes call options, a strip of 12 monthly calls, and up front he will pay the option dealer premium. This enables, but does not require the user to get 10 more megawatts of swap hedge, receive power index and pay $60. The premium is paid up front and is not in play during the delivery months. If the power index for a given month is less than $60, the user will elect not to do the discretionary 10 megawatt swap from the option. This means that only one third of the exposure is hedged at $60, leaving two thirds of his power to be bought at the lower price. But if index is above 60 for a given month, the user will exercise the call. That will add the incremental 10 megawatts of swap hedge. This means that two thirds of the user's exposure is hedged, fixed at $60. Only one third of the purchase volume will be subject to higher prices. The net of this structure is, if prices are low, two thirds of the user's total volume benefits from lower prices. If prices are high, two thirds of the volume is hedged. This structure is made possible because of the separation of the management of physical and price risk. This separation of physical from financial also has implication in force majeure. In a fixed price supply contract, if the seller declares force majeure, deliveries and payments are stopped. Buyer loses physical supply. But we know that bundled with supply in this fixed price contract is also price risk protection. When supply is lost, so is this price protection. Supply will have to be replaced in the daily market. Force majeure, as it reduces supply to the market, is likely to add a premium to that replacement cost. With the swap, force majeure only disrupts the index supply contract. There is no force majeure provision in the swap, so it remains in place. Price protection from the swap remains. For example, 
If index on the first of the month was set at $70, both the swap and the supply contract indexes would be fixed at $70. If during the month force majeure is declared, physical supply is lost. But the swap is not lost, and in this case will continue to pay the user the net $10. The power would have to be replaced, the cost likely being some force majeure premium over the market price level of around $70. Netting the $10 received from the swap, the cost will be in the area of $60 plus the force majeure premium. On the other hand, if index on the first of the month falls to $50, again both the swap and supply contract indices would now be fixed at $50. If force majeure is declared during the month, physical supply again is lost, but the swap is not lost. In this case, the user will continue to pay the net $10. The power would be replaced, the cost likely being some force majeure premium over market price level, now around $50. Netting the $10 received from the swap, the cost would remain in the area of the $60 plus force majeure premium, same as in our rising price scenario. So while a swap doesn't protect against intramonth rising prices, it nonetheless continues to reduce volatility and stabilize cost. This compares to the fixed price physical contract in which price protection is lost and the user will have the uncertain costs as it must pay whatever the daily price might be. Now let's consider the swap from another perspective. In this example we have an exploration and production company out in West Texas. We're in the month of March and the producer senses that WTI prices are too low given supply and demand conditions. A shift in the forward curve into backwardation tends to confirm his price forecasts. Specifically, prices WTI should rise by the time we get to summer. But things get complicated when one of the regular customers asks the producer to sell them August crude, which currently trades at $70. Here is the producer's dilemma. First and foremost, he wants to meet the customer's need. He also has no problem committing his August crude production. In fact, he very much would like to place his physical. The issue is this. We know that his fixed price contract bundles together two component risks. Physical is only one of them. There is also financial. This August contract not only places physical oil, but it also causes the producer to give up its natural long position. Given the producer's expectation for summer prices, this is not desirable. The producer can reacquire the long position by using a swap. Producer will pay away the $70 fixed price and receive in its place the August index for WTI. As $70 is both paid and received, they cancel each other out. On net, the producer is simply delivering crude and earning the August crude oil index. The producer has placed his oil production for August and kept the customer happy, but the swap enabled him to retain the long position that suited his price view. In upcoming modules in the series, the role and methods of the swap dealer will be explored. That will entail understanding quoting conventions for swaps. The terminology in the swap market can be confusing. The trader jargon will be demystified. And these box and arrow diagrams are essential in the derivative trading and hedging business. We will learn to create and analyze the configurations in this graphic language. Paradigm offers training programs on a wide array of topics. All of them address the unique challenges of managing risk in the energy sector. We invite you to our website to view more modules and to get further information about Paradigm's tutorials and classroom training programs.